Um, lover and misery? Love and misery. Love and misery, sorry. Mm -hmm. sorry, sorry. That's um, Tobias. He's a very good friend of mine, lives in Stockholm. He's, he was recording, this was before, this was one of the before songs. He, were, he was recording for his new album, which he's working on now. And uh, we were actually in his apartment at home recording for another song for his album. And then we would, when we couldn't really do that, he said, oh. How come? It didn't work. We didn't find the magic in that one. It was, uh, I tried to, f I think, uh, I don't know what, it, I think it will work out in the end, but that day we couldn't do it. And then uh, he said, well, I have another song that I want you to try and do something on. And this was the Love and Mystery song. And uh, I just sat down with a mic and just improvised a bit. You mean improvise in, in the lyrics? In the no, the lyrics were set. Okay. But to find the voice, the, the, the backing vocal kind okay. of yeah. melody. And he had some ideas of what he wanted. And I think we just took maybe three takes or something. It was finished. <laughs> and you were talking about the magic. Uh, I think you've used the word now mm. three or four mm. times. It is. You just feel it when yeah. it's there. But do you know, can you... Now you've, well, now you write, I think, uh, five or six years. Do you get to know when the magic will be there, or is it still for you a surprise when the magic... Mm, sometimes you can think, oh, I think this will be really good, but it's, it's hard to know. It's, uh, you have to hear it first. So, but you don't think about it then? There is uh, some you things... Lose the magic, maybe. There's some things that you can think about, some techniques and stuff that you can think about just, you know holding back and not giving everything, just stuff like makes it on the edge. That's, that's sometimes very magical. And uh, you, also, you also learn how to get there better than you did before. That if you, if you do one song together and it doesn't work, you know that you can try this and this and this and this. You can try different ways in to the song, like trying to sing it more Relax, try and sing it more casual, try different ways of singing, which and suddenly you just know that it's there. Okay. Instead of trying the same way all over and over again, it doesn't work. So you should try standing like this. I did that on the Alicari song, the Castle Bridge. I was trying to sing that verse over and over, it didn't work, and then suddenly I just did like this. Neighbors never reckon. I just kind of was kind of looking down and singing kind of laid back and then it was there and they looked at me from the window the studio window <laughs> so okay. sometimes it's just small things that can change the whole feeling of it okay so. um such a common bird mm -hmm. that's Wendem Kniel uh, also a good friend everyone's become friends of mine now so <laughs> <laughs> and it's, um, she's Canadian and we've been touring together for the whole the whole year actually almost not summer tours, but uh, the whole springtime she came came to all the European concerts and Norwegian and Swedish concerts. She was supporting me. And uh, she's a folk, kind of folk pop artist. I think she can call it that. And she will be the next, the next Determine Records artist as well. She will release her new album on Determine. And we were, we had also talked since ages that we were going to do something together. And on the tours, we always did things like she played accordion on some song, and we've been playing together a little bit. And um, this is this uh, such a common bird is one of my favorites that she has. It's uh, the lyrics is brilliant, I think. And, uh, the name is one one or two lines from the song. Um, let's see. Uh, they they were calling like seagulls, but nobody heard such a beautiful message from such a common bird okay. which is I think it's so spot on yeah. it's really beautiful poet poetic words and um, and she was she was doing her album she's doing her album in Stockholm now and she we went in and put and put the duets on her arrangements and tried to do a duet and we kind of worked 
at home trying to find the right backing vocals and everything. So we worked quite intense for a couple of days just to find the right thing. And uh, it's very interesting. We have two very different voices and very different ways of writing. So it was a lot of fun to do it. And when did you find the right? I was. Um, I think we worked for two days or something with that song, the vocals on that song. First we couldn't find it, we tried to alternate the verses and everything, which just kind of felt unnatural. Because that's one of the good things about a good duet, is that if it has to be natural, it has yeah. to feel natural. You can't feel it, it's just been puzzled together. So we worked to make a natural flow in it. So, um, yeah. Okay. Now, but I was wondering when, when did you find, or how did you find the right flow then? No, because it just happens in the studio when you try different ways. And no, but it means uh, for this song, because you were saying, well, you were looking and trying for two days, and when did it all came together? Do you still remember? No, really, it was more like a puzzle of okay. uh, different processes, actually, because we tried, uh, we had to find, I don't know, it's... Um, it was also kind of the same thing with this song as Alicar's song, okay. he, that I had been i had been touring with her, so I heard it every night for, for lots of months. So I'm so used to her version of it, so I had to find my voice in it. Okay. But it was good. We collaborated. We talked a lot in the studio. She said, "I think you should do more like that," and we had a very open cooperation there. Isn't so that hard? Not with someone you know. No, but I mean, sometimes you have two souls, and then you have to. Well, you have to be open about cr critic or about Yeah, but I know we respect each other so much on what we do, so it's so extremely constructive if you can take it, you know. Yeah. So it's not ego then with Anne Brun? No, the thing is that this, uh, this duet album has been totally no zero percentage of ego. Okay. So and that's the good thing about it. It's been so much fun. Every, every recording has been fun and very rewarding. And uh, I remember one journalist asked me in, in, Aus in Norway and said, aren't you afraid that you will get in the background? And I, I was like, what? <laughs> what, what? What do you mean? I haven't even thought about it yeah. because the, that's not the idea. The idea is it's not my new album. It's, it's a cooperation album. And I think someone also wrote that I'm a guest on my own album. And it's like, well, that's the whole thing. You haven't really got the concept. Yeah. So it is a concept album, and it is also my thought of it, which is I'm really happy to be able to do this, because if I was, I was signed in a major label, I don't think I could have done this album, because most of these artists are not known, and they wouldn't see it as a commercial but thing. But is it for you uh, uh, a nice way to help them and to get them... It is actually a way for me to show people... Okay. These people are this is good musicians, and it's so much fun now because uh, the record has already sold thousands in Norway, and this means that all of these people have this record will now know these artists. Yeah. They will know who they are. So if Tobias comes to Norway and plays, people will see his name and they will recognize it, and they think, "Oh, that's the guy with that lovely song on the duet album." I will go and see his show, and that's. That's so cool because that's how I got where I'm getting now. People have helped me, and you know, so it's. I think that a lot of people think, at least this is my world, and maybe I'm naive, but a lot of people think that uh, musicians are competing with each other and everything. And but in my world, these people that I've met, it's just. We just love what we do, and uh, if we can help each other, we do it. So. Who have I? Um, over here. Oh. Was it over here, the knock? Or I no? don't know. No, I don't, I don't think so. Last one. Song number six. Another Canadian. Mm. That's, a, that's the first duet that I did, and it's a temporary dive. It was on a temporary dive. It's by, with Ron Sexton. Yeah, isn't it? and it's my song, and uh, that, was, that was just amazing and fun to do. Why him? I love his voice. He's always since I discovered him, I think it's one or two years ago. He really has a, a warm... Very warm voice, very personal voice. He has that magic in his voice that some 
that many, I think everyone on the album has. And when you hear him sing, you just, you just want to sit and listen. It yeah. makes you calm. And uh, it was, you know, it's a fortunate thing that I have my cooperations with V2. So he's a V2 artist. I could ask him because he's in the same range of artists that I am in. So I had, it was a natural channel in to ask him. And my, my, my people helped me to get it done. So I went f and we met up and I played the song for him and he liked it. It's different from what he does. So he had to work on it as well and try to find his way in. So it was, uh, I think both for me and him it was fun because it was kind of different for both of us. Well, thank you. Hmm?